So we're going to be looking at the sum of two cubes, and I, I want to just take a moment and analyze why this formula that you're often given makes sense in terms of algebra. So what it's saying essentially is that if you have one cube, x cubed, and you add to another, you can refactor it in terms of these two expressions. The first being x plus y, and the second being x squared minus xy plus y squared. And although this looks complex, and on one level what it's saying is very similar to the idea if you were to, to find out what is 6. Well, 6 is just 2 times 3. So what you're doing there is to rewrite a number 6 in terms of two factors. That's actually also what's happening here, although it's, it's a little bit more complicated. It's saying that x cubed and y cubed is the same thing as one factor times another. And I want to show in this video how we know that makes sense. So, so instead of getting yourself into a mess of trying to memorize this formula, you can always reevaluate to see if it's actually correct. So where is this coming from and, and what's the idea? Well, in terms of a picture, we'll come back to that in another video because it's going to take me a while to set up, I guess, my understanding of how this makes sense in terms of a picture. But algebraically, all we have to do is multiply these two expressions and then look at the product. And when we do that, we'll see that this is the product. And that'll show us that both sides of these equations are, in fact, equal. So how do we do that? Well, how do we multiply these two? It's, it's, my algorithm is very similar to the general long multiplication algorithm. So for example, if I was to multiply 123 times 12, what would I do? Well, I would take the 2 and multiply it by each individual digit up here. So 2 times 3 is 6, 2 times 2 is 4, and 2 times 1 is 2. And then now that I've, I'm done with the units digit here, I move up place value to the tens and multiply 1 by 3 to get 30, right? And you often leave a, a 0 in here as a placeholder. 1 times 2 and then 1 times 1. And then we add these up, right? 6, 7, 4, 1. And that's our answer. But in order to understand how this works with, with this kind of expression, we should think about what's actually happening with long multiplication. When you take 2 and you multiply it by each digit, you're thinking of 123 in terms of its place value. So it's 120 and 3. And you're multiplying each part of 123 by 2. Right? 2 times 3, and then 2 times 20, and 2 times 100. And then you're, you're also splitting 12 up. So after you're done multiplying the 2 from 12 by each place value of 123, then right, we move over here and we multiply 10, which is also part of 12, 10 and 2, by 100, and by 20, and by 3. And, and I guess the reason I'm showing you this is because here, when I look at this expression, I almost see the same thing. x plus y could be thought of as one number being broken up into two parts, just like we're breaking 12 up up into 10 and 2. And 123 could also be thought of as a number being broken up into these 1, 2, 3 parts. So really all we have to do now is multiply each part by each other, just as we do with 123 by 12. So let me just clear this out, right? And we'll show how this might work with something that looks a little bit less friendly in terms of algebra. And I'm just going to follow the same model as I would with long multiplication. So here we go. First we set it up. x squared minus xy plus y squared times x plus y. And I'm going to write a dot over here because I don't want to confuse it with the x symbol I'm using in over here. Anyway, so now we take the y and multiply it by each part. What's y times y squared? Well, that's y cubed, right? Because here, what you're really saying is y times y times y. That's y squared, y times y. Multiply them out, you get y cubed. OK, so y times y squared is y cubed. And now we multiply it by the next part in the expression. And in fact, I'm going to treat this as negative xy. Uh, but you can think of it as positive xy and then add in the subtraction sign. Either way, you'll get the same result. So now y times negative xy. And what do we get there? Well, 
Here, y times y, we can combine those two and simplify them to y squared. And the negative x is still there. We haven't touched that, so this is almost, I think of it as negative xy squared. And we're going to add the y cubed to that. And last, we take y and multiply it by x squared. And we take y and multiply it by x squared. You can just think of that as x squared y. We don't really compare, combine the y and x variables. We don't really know what they are. So we leave them as separate terms. And we can leave that now as x squared times y. So now we're almost done, actually. Even though this, this seems like a long, tedious process, we're getting somewhere. Now we take the next part of the x plus y expression and multiply it out by these up here. Same idea. x times y squared, well, we can think of that as just x times y squared. Right? We, don't, we can't really manipulate that. That's a positive. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up with the terms in our first expression so that things match. So what I mean is here, I have an x with no uh, exponent bigger than 1. It's just x. And then y squared is just y squared. So I look for another term that matches that format. And here it is. Here it's x and y squared, but it's negative. So I line them up. We have positive xy squared right under the negative xy squared, because when I add those two, remember we're adding a multiplication, those will cancel out to zero. They are opposites. And now, what do we do? Well, we've multiplied x by y squared. Now we're going to multiply x by negative xy. x times negative xy. And here, the negative sign, I wouldn't worry about it too much. It really just means negative 1. So where we put it and how we apply it doesn't really matter, but in the end, since there's a negative 1 in here somewhere, when we multiply all of this stuff out, there's only one negative factor, the product will still be negative. So this is going to be equal to negative x squared, x times x is x squared, times y. And that will match up to this expression right here. Before we got x squared y, and now we have negative x squared y. And when we add that up over here, negative x squared y, that will cancel out with this term. And things are looking quite wonderful. And last, we have x times x squared. And what's that going to be? Well, the same thing as same thing in terms of our first combination, y times y squared. Now we have x times x times x, which is x cubed. And now we add up, as we do in long multiplication. These cancel out, and so do these. And what's left is x cubed plus y cubed. What does all this mean? It just means that this expression times this one does, in fact, equal x cubed plus y cubed. So in the next couple of videos, we're going to use this algebraic connection to solve and factor out a whole bunch of polynomial expressions uh, that can be represented as cubes and then factored as such. All right, hope this helps.